Hello, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to our Red Letter Study. Last time we were with Jesus, he was um, arguing or debating with the Pharisees all over the traditions of the elders. Remember, Jesus wasn't attacking traditions in and of itself, but when they usurped the place of God's commandments. I give a few examples from the evangelical world. Well, I could have easily used, of course, the Catholic Church, which for the most part have taken a lot of traditions and put them beyond and above God's commandments. For example, the idea of grace for salvation. They speak of it as something that the church has control over, and they can give some of that grace to you if you, of course, give money, like indulgences and other things. You can serve the church like in the Crusades, and you will get that grace to go to heaven. That goes beyond what God has said, which is salvation is by grace through faith, period. But I could also mention uh, the Pope speaking as Cathedra, which means that when he speaks in this sense, he's really filled by the Spirit, and what he says is authoritative. Even if it goes beyond or against Scripture, he's speaking with the authority of Jesus. And we even see that nowadays in more uh, conservative in more charismatic circles, prophets and apostles who speak with authority and even if it goes beyond or against the Bible, they're speaking with truth. Like the idea that um, if you are having struggle with certain sins because you have a certain demon and you have to cast them out. It, that is really big within the charismatic world. Even though the Bible says if you have a problem with sins because you need to put it to death. That's called sanctification. Nowhere does it call us to cast out those demons of anger or whatever. So they're usurping what the Bible commands, put to death the deeds of the flesh, for their own doctrines or commandments of man. Those are just many great examples of what Jesus was dealing with. But then he's going to move on from that, from that specific situation, and turn to his disciple, turn to the crowd and teach them, not about traditions, but about what is real defilement, what truly affects us spiritually. Let's see what Jesus says, shall we? And he called the people to him and said to them, Hear and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person. What comes out of the mouth, this defiles a person. So the fact that Jesus called people to him might include the Pharisees, as we will see quickly enough, that he's really gathering the crowd, taking this opportunity to make them understand what true defilement really is. And it's not what comes outside to enter the mouth, but what actually comes out of the mouth. And he's going to explain what he means quite quickly. But do take note that he speaks with authority here. Now he's speaking as if he's God himself. That's what the crowd is always so in awe of, amazed by. He speaks with a great authority. Not Rabbi so-and-so said that or the traditions of the elder says, he says, it's just not like that. You understand, that's not the way it works. Because he's God, of course. Because he's God. And this brings Peter with his response. The disciples came and said to him, Do you not do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? Okay, my mistake it wasn't Peter, he's coming up soon enough. But still, it does seem like at this point he's kind of left the crowd and he's only with the disciples themselves, those who are really followers of Jesus. And they're asking him, did you see the reactions of the Pharisees? Probably some of them were really angry, frustrated, left in a huff. He took everything we believed for hundreds of years and he just said, it's all nothing. How dare you, this guy? And the disciple says, did, did, did you see that? And of course, again, just going to take that to teach. That's what he does. He takes these opportunities to teach. He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be rooted out. Let them alone. They are blind guides. And if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. This is all about God's sovereign work of salvation. Right? The word plant, the idea of plants, is an image used throughout Scripture, all the new, to speak about God's people. And he says there are some that are really God's plant. He planted them. Think about the parables of uh, the kingdom of God, where he says there's some that planted by God and some planted by the devil. Even the distinction, some are the work of God. 
Israel itself was a, a vine planted by God, not the other nations. Israel was. It's specific. God chose to plant those. God chose to reach up and grab hold of. But those who are trying to grab, get into God's hand by themselves, trying to come into his garden and plant themselves in there, will be uprooted. Because they're not put there by God. Now, when I say that they put themselves in the garden or in his hands, I'm not talking about the fact that they really turn to God. They're trying to create a way to get stuff from God. But I digress. Um, you can't miss the callousness almost of the way she's expressing this, right? They're blind people fall into blind and they'll fall into a pit. Jesus, don't you care that they're going to a pit? Well, of course, he, he came to die for those who are in the pit, but the Bible does tell us that the world is in darkness and they don't want the light. That's what John chapter 1 tells us. We, we love the darkness. We want to be blind. And when somebody tries to remove the veil, well, hey, 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 I don't want the light. Leave me alone. Paul says that too, to Timothy, that in, in uh, the last days, which started with Paul and they're still there right now, People look for souls who, who will uh, tickle itching ears. And they'll look for teachers. There's, they will be the blind and they will want blind teachers. I want somebody who leads me into a pit. That's the heart of man. That's the way the Bible speaks. But just in case we say, yeah, but don't you care? Shouldn't you do something more? Well, Paul has an answer for that in Romans 9. Who are you, man, to speak back to God? Right? If he wants to show mercy to some, he has the right to. If he wants to harden others, he has the right to. If he sees these blind people looking for blind guides, want to jump into the pit, he can say, I will let you get what you want. You want to try to root yourself into my garden to get stuff from me, abusing my goodness, but not my, you know, my salvation? You will get what you deserve. That's the idea here. God's sovereign election. And Jesus says it with such a nonchalant but assured way, a thought. It's, it's, this is the way it is. I find that fascinating. This is Jesus speaking. He does care, but at the same time, this is the reality. Now, Peter, as I said before, will have a question. Peter said to him, explain the parable to us. The one that he just spoke about, um, you know, but comes into the mouth, will not defile, but what comes out of it well. And he said, this is Jesus explaining. Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever comes into the mouth passes into the stomach and is expelled? Now it might seem like Jesus is being crude a bit, you know, you eat and you poop. What is, what, what is Jesus saying that? He's actually trying to show these Things on the outside are just that. Things. In and of itself, things cannot affect the spiritual. That's what he's trying to get at. Now what is going to truly affect you spiritually, defile you, uh, he's going to get to. But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart. And this defiles a person. For out of the mouth comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, and slander. Now be careful here, not try to uh, separate the inside of the person like some have done. Like the heart is this, the mind is that. For the Bible, the inner man is the inner man, heart and mind. Emotions and thoughts. I mean, whatever you would call it, the inner man is the inner man. The flesh is a combination of all of them. However you want to put it, it is. it comes from you. Sin comes from you. James will pick up on that and that you say that you are tempted by your own desires. I think note of that. It comes from you and not the outside stuff. That doesn't mean it's okay to watch or do anything. There is a sense of renewing the mind and being affected in our thoughts. But defilement itself, spiritually defiling something, comes from ourselves. We. Because in the flesh are defiled. And that's why Jesus will... And by saying this, these are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands 
does not defile anyone. Again, it doesn't come from the outside. Now, I could mention that nowadays, we have those who talk about cursed objects. If you have that in your house, it might affect you spiritually. They really lay into this idea of how these demons can have a, a way into you by these objects. These things can spiritually defile you. Jesus just said, no, it doesn't work like that. Now, they might take up texts like uh, in Ephesians, where it says that uh, don't let your anger get the best of you and let a, a door for the devil or a place inside of you. And they think that that's literally if when, when you, you sin, you let the devil in. But that would contradict the fact that we are filled with the Spirit. Oh, what about Acts when G- Paul, uh, Peter, says that the devil had captured the heart of Ananias and Sapphira. Yet right after he continues to speak and says that they've given into the flesh. Because yeah, there's a sense where in the flesh, by our flesh, we could uh, say yes to the devil. Again, James that says that um, temptation starts with what you desire. The devil doesn't force sin on us. He puts out his fishing cane with a little bait on it. A bait you desire. You bite on it. He didn't force sin on you, but he didn't tempt you, lure you into it, of course. But I digress. Again, this idea that outside stuff can defile us per se, spiritually, um, contradicts what Jesus is teaching. Again, this doesn't mean you can watch and do whatever you want. There's a sense that it will affect the way you think and affect, therefore, how you live. That's why you have to renew your mind. Not to have the same mindset of this wall, but because you watch a certain movie or, or even back in the day you played cards means automatically something evil, spiritually demonic is going to happen to you. That contradicts, again, the words of our Lord. It starts from in here. Not because you picked up card, you can become a gambler. You became a gambler because you want to do that. Your wicked heart wants to do that. It's not the magic cards. Not because you watched a certain violent movie, you can become violent. Your heart is violent. You watch that movie because you want to watch that movie. And then do the evil deed. It comes from you. But of course, there's also a call to renew our minds more and more and put to death the deeds of the flesh because, again, it comes from us. Very humbling, these words of Jesus. Because in the pharisaical and, like I said, modern charismatic way of thinking, you blame everything else but you. They're defiling me because I'm pure. From the Bible standpoint, from Jesus, the word of God standpoint, you're defiled. And you're going to hurt other people, poison other people. Humbly. Humbly. May they uh, humble our hearts, brothers and sisters. And on that note, be blessed.